This is a virtual house call with an infectious diseases specialist. So joining us live this morning is Dr. Alon Vaisman with the University Health Network. Dr. Vaisman, great to be chatting with you again. Uh, we are just hearing from the province that the Pfizer bivalent booster for residents 12 and up will be able to get that going starting on Monday. So remind us what this Pfizer booster is good for and the importance of getting it. So essentially, the idea is that uh, patients who have had who haven't had vaccination in less or more than three to six months ago would benefit from having a booster of the Pfizer vaccine. In the 12 to 17 group, the Pfizer dose is expected to have less of the myocarditis risk than the higher dose of the Moderna, mm. and hence why there is a slight recommendation to get this over the Moderna in that age group. But in the 18 and above group, there is again the same benefit, the presumptive benefit of getting a booster at this time of the year is that individuals are going to have a lower likelihood of transmission and picking up the infection in the first three months. And secondly, for those who are at higher risk in the higher age groups, over 65 or immunocompromised, getting a booster is presumed to have also a lower rate of mortality or to drop your mortality rate and prevent ICU admission. Those are the two still, the two main benefits of getting vaccinated at this stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. Raisman, thanks for reminding us of that risk of myocarditis, uh, more so in Moderna than Pfizer. Uh, okay, and we know that COVID-19 cases are up, so are other seasonal illnesses. Hospitals are once again feeling the strain. What infectious disease trends do you see contributing to this, and what can the public do to help spare our health and our health care system? So unlike the two, the two seasons that have passed in 2020 and 2021, the one we're experiencing now going into the end of 2022, will contribute, will have a more contribution from influenza and other respiratory viruses. And we're already seeing a slight uptick of those viruses as well, along with the COVID. So the same measures that we've been using to try to protect ourselves from COVID are going to be the same ones that are going to protect us against these other respiratory viruses against influenza. And it's important for the public to recognize that influenza can be very deadly in some age groups that is likely more deadly than COVID. Mm. So it's very important for individuals to get vaccinated against influenza. The influenza vaccine is protective against influenza, but not COVID or vice versa. It is also important for individuals to not come to work sick, not to go to daycare sick or other school sick. And also masking is going to be important in particular settings where there's higher risk of transmission. For example, in congregate settings or in areas where people are not able to distance properly. So the same kind of measures we've been talking about for the last few years are going to be important this time around as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Dr. Vaisman, you just pretty much touched on my next question. Is It's that experts are warning that this is going to be a very intense flu season, especially for young kids. They're at greatest risk. How concerning is this for you? You just mentioned that the mortality uh, rate for, for influenza and flu could be even more so for younger kids. Yes, so unlike COVID, which has a very clear association between age and having a severe outcome like ICU admission or death, with influenza, it's, uh, it has two peaks at very, very young ages and very, very old ages. So it's very important that people, that kids six months or older get vaccinated against influenza and that uh, people are doing their best to protect themselves against it. Of course, the overall likelihood that a child will die from flu is low, just like it is from other viruses. It's just that it's, it's potentially higher than COVID in that age group. So it's important for people to recognize the symptoms and to stay away if they're being ill, if someone's ill, for example, large family gatherings. But overall, still the risk is low, but we should do our best to try to protect everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking of protection, the flu shot doesn't become available until November 1st. So I guess uh, your recommendation is to take all those kind of COVID-19 measures if you want to prevent against getting the flu, correct? Yes, and, I, and it's important to recognize that currently the amount of influenza that's circulating is still relatively low. But similar to other seasons, we start to see a progression this time of year. So as we go from October to November to December, we're going to see a steady rise in cases. And it's likely going to peak sometime in the end of December, early January, or maybe second week of January. That's the mm -hmm. current prediction, and that goes along with what we've seen in previous years of influenza. So as we go through this, people are going to start to have symptoms. They're going to be testing themselves for COVID. But recognize that even if you test negative for COVID, if you're still symptomatic, recognize you might have a different respiratory virus. It's more likely this time around compared to the previous years. Okay, uh, Dr. Alon Vaisman, that does it for our time this morning. Always appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you.